Nothing shatters the sound of silence at Padam, 12,000 feet above sea level in the shadows of the Zanskar Range in Ladakh. It's about minus 10 degrees centigrade, with the sun yet to trickle down from the mountains over the tough 13 Zanskar Sentinels 13 Border Roads Task Force Camp, where we spent the night. Even our vehicles don't break the Buddha's meditation. In the town named after Guru Padmasambhava or Rinpoche, believed to be the 8th century founder of Tibetan Buddhism and also known as the Second Buddha. Before we continue on the third axis to Leh, another testimony to infrastructural development in the region lies a few steps away. A new, wider, longer Lungnak Bridge in shiny contrast to its rusty old predecessor over the currently virtually dry riverbed. Travelling westwards, it takes one to Dras. All along the region, the BRO is overcoming challenges posed at these heights, temperatures and topographies. Primarily these high mountain ranges with heights ranging from 11,000 to 19,000 feet, extreme uh, winter temperatures dipping down to minus 40 degrees centigrade and the difficult mountains and terrain, lack of oxygen, lack of vegetation. These are the environmental cha uh, challenges. Plus, as, as you are aware, the area is not as well developed, so obviously logistical challenges are also there. Most of the equipment, most of the resources that we get, we get either from uh, Chandigarh or Pathan Court or Jambu, which are quite a far distant, uh, distance from here. So getting all those stores and resources over here, getting labor over here, all these are various challenges that uh, we are facing for road and infrastructure development. But we are overcoming all these challenges and the output is right in front of your eyes. From Padam northwards, 44 kilometers of the 298 kilometer NPD road till a bit beyond Zangla is black topped and dual laned capable of taking on heavy vehicles. From there, 32 kilometers are currently classified as National Highway Dual Lane, NHDL, with a width of 7 meters, with a black topping to be completed. This takes the road past Kilima to Nirak. The approximately 6 kilometer Nirak chilling stretch is the only part that is still being cut from the mountain rock. With teams working from both sides, it is expected to be through by early summer 2024, completing the NPD road's all-weather, year-round connectivity. At an elevation of 12,037 feet, Padam can be a vital springboard for an altitude-adapted Indian military. This allows for swift troop surges, should they be required, along the Chinese-held Tibetan border or the LAC, Siachen and POJK. This strategic advantage is just one of the many reasons why the Nemo Padam Darcha NPD Lay Road, which we are currently traversing, holds such critical importance. Overall, the 298-kilometer NPD Road has approximately 148 kilometers of black-topped dual lanes, 84 kilometers of completed NHDL yet to be black-topped, 52 kilometers of NHDL under progress and about 6 kilometers of the Nirak Chilling stretch to be hewn out of the mountains. The figures change constantly as the Border Roads Organization, BRO, makes further progress. Our driver, Tirat Kumar, is enjoying the high-speed drive, racing the shadows of our own vehicle along the gorgeous sight of the seemingly never-ending ranges on both sides. Our camera batteries are lasting just minutes in the freezing weather and need to be changed often to the Enduro variant to perform at these temperatures. The signs are not all bad for us though. A little less than an hour after Honya on the Zanskar Valley Road near the Zanskar River, we stopped to catch a very rare sighting of a white wolf. 
we are told catching a glimpse is even more infrequent than seeing a snow leopard. Wolves are usually not seen in the day and definitely not alone, away from the pack at 8.42 in the morning in broad sunlight. In the backdrop of these majestic mountains with its tail tucked between its legs, it's likely this one has been thrown out of the pack by the alpha wolf. Cutting other unusual figures are natural mountain features that look like huge ant hills appearing in clumps, spearing skywards. We now enter what are promised to be gorges as spectacular as the Grand Canyon, and they certainly are. V-shaped near vertical mountain walls with the sometimes blue, sometimes green, other times turquoise waters of the Zanskar River below. The narrow road that the BRO has cut through the rock face looks even more dangerous of a precipice on our 360 camera. As we cross a smaller bridge at Kilima, it's getting cooler as we drive almost at river height, chasing the sun and the vehicles ahead. These roads are paved with the sweat, toil and even blood of many. The dangers of cutting C-sections like this through rock, illustrated by the sacrifices made by many including BRO personnel like engineer Shamsher Singh who was awarded the Shorya Chakra after he and his JCB were buried in a rock slide. Sharp spearing dagger-like icicles in winter can add to the danger. One can only imagine what it took to cut through this mountain face by looking at the near mirror image of the untouched mountain face on the other side of the river. So all these axes initially from 1960s onwards were primarily off tracks and class 9 axes. Most of these axes have been converted into National Highway Single Lane or National Highway Double Lane. So this not, not just improves the logistic support for the armed forces, also reduces the travel time. Plus, the main stakeholders in all this is not just the armed forces, it's the people of Ladakh. Now all these places are well connected. It will boost tourism also in this area. It will bring a lot of development to this area and obviously it will strengthen our borders against our adversaries. In 2023, a narrow, steep and much longer route through Linkshed was abandoned as the BRO drilled through a safer and shorter route to where we are heading, Nirak. So the significance of this location is basically, normally you would have seen the Linkshed axis is being followed by the general population here. That axis is around 40 kilometers more in distance and it takes two hours more. So we had thought of uh, getting a shorter axis, which is more feasible. So when we started the work, it was very difficult. But then uh, we had achieved this in six to seven months. Linkshed has been abandoned now. Mostly people follow this route. It saves a lot of time for them. So now uh, we are happy that uh, locals are also appreciating this uh, road connectivity. And uh, in future, it is going to be a change for them to bring prosperity and progress. And the difficulty of cutting through this kind of rock. Yeah, we have and to initially do the Ricky, identify the uh, uh, path where you have to trace the road and then you do the cutting, formation cutting. So that is followed by blast. Here also you will see the uh, front zone, the mountains are all sloping at 80 to 90 degrees. So even when you have a blast, there is a high probability of ricochets coming. So we have to take permission, sanctions, the movement of population, locals have to be stopped totally. Then we do the blast. So either we do it early morning or we do it late in the evening. And the temperatures as it is, you see now it is around 5 to minus 5 to minus 6 degrees. So in winters as the it falls, it is uh, snowbound. At the same time, it is minus 15 to minus 20. Uh, the most difficult part if you see in this rock, uh, even if you have uh, removed a portion through blasting, 
by the time you clear it next day morning you come back you will find that some stone have fallen again fallen back another issue is the strata of the rock if you see it is all uh, basalt sediments so when we are working on this after the blast there is a pro great probability of having shooting stones so that was what we had to take care of equipment damages uh, we had to be ensuring that people are also safe or laborers who are working for us their safety was paramount for us so with that as a challenge we had to work however with a uh, proper planning and safety precautions being uh, taken care by the oics who have been taking care of this job we have been able to achieve this in a reasonably good time Lieutenant Colonel Pawan Kumar also tells us about a bridge built up ahead that required the BRO to recce the river despite a very high current and how they unimaginably maneuvered their 20 ton machines in this inhospitable terrain Colonel Kumar if you can again just orient us uh, with this bridge and what is its significance Okay at this juncture we are now at kilometer 82 this home bank is Kilima and the far bank is nirak so this is the most critical link between uh, nirak and kilima on the nimu padam darcha axis uh, you will see that this is a 160 feet double double bridge it has got a, a load capacity of 18 tons 18 ton wheeled and this bridge since the time we have constructed the linkshed axis has been abandoned by the local population the traffic moves on this and this has brought a lot of prosperity to the people of uh, nirak there is no medical facility there is no uh, business perspective and the uh, chada trek ends around 300 meters from here so that is where this link uh, between iraq and kilima as this bridge has come as a important uh, critical development for them uh, the medical facilities have now improved they can reach padam which is 2 hours and there is this community health center so that way it helps in most of the population getting attention uh, from padam in terms of uh, medicines in terms of getting transportation in winters so like you were saying the whole link would be incomplete without without this bridge. bridge yeah correct again if you could explain why the reason is if you have to go from uh, nirak side to padam you will have to uh, reach an altitude around 11200 feet cross that linkshed axis and then come down back towards uh, the uh, padam uh, road and in winters when the snow is there it is not reachable because the slopes don't permit a vehicular movement it is only by track so that is why since the time this bridge has come up it is a all weather uh, road which we are looking forward to construct so this is the most important uh, development I, i i even for a lay person i can imagine the difficulties and challenges that you went through to complete this yeah you see the terrain on both sides the far bank slope we didn't have the place to construct so we had to reduce that mountain is around 80 meters uh, to vertically come down and get the uh, home bank available to launch the bridge again this is a 200 ton bridge which take a uh, lot of effort uh, we had to construct it with uh, our own expert boys and other than that we had the labor which is locally available cpls mm -hmm. they have constructed this so it was a major challenge we could accomplish this in 2 to 3 days by the time we could reach uh, the far bank end and uh, jack down this bridge so it was a difficult task actually and very satisfying and yeah sure. it has been because since the time it has been constructed we have been able to progress on this nimu padam darcha road uh, in the in terms of uh, the kilometers we wanted to achieve in a monthly basis at the same time looking at the uh, our dgbr's uh, strategic view and the aim to complete this bridge by next year from the kilimani rak bridge we drive to the 114 road construction company rcc general reserve engineer force gref camp for a quick lunch We reach the Nirak stretch of a gorge at 11811 feet. About 6 kilometers of uncharted road is being cut from here and from the chilling side and when both meet The NPD alternate road access to Leh will be complete. It will save 120 kilometers and two and a half hours, 
from the current route via Shingela and Sisirla that joins with the Srinagar Nimu Le NH1. Currently, it's a virtual dead end on both sides of Nirak and Chilling as the BRO navigates its way through these mountain faces. We also had to walk the last kilometer or so to experience how the organization is coping with the challenges of robotic drilling meter by meter using controlled explosive blasts, clearing the rock, leveling the trail and finally making a road that no one has traveled on. We intend to connect the Padam Valley onwards through Nirak and Chilling. We are standing at present at the Nirak phase, where we have two phases, two multi-attack points to uh, operate on this road. And then go onwards to join by the road that we just came up to in Nimu. This is about 268 kilometers. And of those 268 kilometers, we are left with a balance of 6.1 kilometers of hard rock, uh, which we are uh, uh, going to ramp through. In coming days, we are planning to move our plants and machineries uh, across the river sir. and we want to open a, another multi-attack point from other side so that we can address these stretches uh, simultaneously and complete it in a given time given to us. Sir. And uh, we expect that by March, we would have uh, established connectivity of the Nimu Padam Darcha and with so many routes connecting, we will have much more development laterals and axials developing in this area. The incredible job of among others the casual paid labourers is evident in BRO footage of the work that has already taken place on the Nirak stretch. But like you said, uh, we have a large number of casual paid labourers drawn from uh, various parts of the country. Many times we get the casual paid labour from uh, the local areas itself. And as on date, we are mustering approximately 80,000 casual paid labour and we find that the personnel that we have, the people behind the machine, they add exponentially to whatever output we have. The cadre strength, like I said, is a unique blend of both the army and border roads personnel. And the army brings with it military discipline, the border roads with their experience and technical acumen bring us technical competence. It's a very, it's a winning combination. Till the Nirak chilling stretch is drilled through, and connected by an expected summer 2024 timeline, the route to Leh is from the sandy, dusty track nearly at the bottom of this gorge. Through the freezing Shengela at 16,300 feet and Sisidla at 15,700 feet. With the light fast fading, we make the final stretch of our journey on the NPD road via Sundo, Wangla and Langru to hit the Srinagar Kargil Dras NH1 and head via Nimu into Leh. Coming up in part 5 of the Himalayan frontier, we go across the uncut stretch of the NPD road from Nimu to Chilling near Leh on the frozen Zanskar River Chadar Trail to interview Lieutenant General Raghu Srinivasan, the DGBRO. The series also documents how the Indian military's women, men and machines are honing their all-weather readiness during another winter against the two-front threat from China and Pakistan. <laughs>